Welcome back. It is Friday, January 28th of 2022, and the markets have wrapped up a pretty crazy week this week following up on the Fed speak, uh, essentially a non-event, but a forecast of uncertainty for the markets to digest, even though the Fed said we're not going to raise rates till March. They didn't say how much they uh, thought they would raise. They didn't say how many um, interest rate hikes they're projecting for 2022, but they did say we're going to be doing a whole lot and that there's a lot of room to run with interest rates because the economy is doing so well in their opinion. So it'll be interesting times ahead. Let's take a look at the markets and see what's going on. And the markets were um, uh, down this morning, bounced back at noon, down again a little bit this afternoon, and then they ended up up a little bit for the afternoon, 3% percent up for the NASDAQ, two and a half for the S&P, 1.6 percent for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So not bad, but I think the big winner today was Warren Buffett. I think you will all be happy to hear that Warren Buffett uh, was up 9.8 billion in less than a day on Apple stock alone. There's Warren right there celebrating the big win. So uh, it's not all bad news, right? There are opportunities out there in every market. Um, and what are the uh, things that we need to keep an eye on moving forward? What are some of the biggest risks to the market moving forward? Well, uh, one of the things is the, um, the Fed. When are they going to step in? This is Bridgewater Associates. That's Ray Dalio's hedge fund, one of the largest hedge funds in the world. And they think that the Federal Reserve is going to let markets um, drift down about 15 to 20 percent before they step in or reverse course. So we have between now and March um, to take profits. And that's basically what Powell said when he spoke this week. He basically sent a message to the markets to go ahead and start taking profits, get ready uh, for, for a less accommodative Fed for um uh, the easy money policy days are over. So go ahead and start taking profits. So the, so they want to bring it in for a soft landing. What does a soft landing mean? It, exactly what it sounds like. They want to bring it in for this gradual decline versus a big drop. And depending on what happens on the global front with conflict around the world, potential conflict around the world, we really don't know um, what the long-term effects are going to be until we get there. So all we can look at right now is hopefully it'll be smooth sailing until March when that first interest rate hike occurs. Everything should be priced in and baked in by the time we get there. And the assumption is the markets will be down potentially 15 to 20%. And uh, if they really want to test the Fed, then that would be uh, the, the level to which the Fed could potentially reverse course. But there is a school of thought out there and some thinking uh, amongst economists and uh, managers and analysts that the Fed is going to let the markets break. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. On the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency front, um, there is a lot of good news out there for crypto, a lot of good news for Bitcoin. Uh, the space keeps getting stronger with investment capital flowing in, with um, Bitcoin mining growing and becoming more uh, industrialized, institutionalized, where you have large uh, Bitcoin mining operations out there, um, securing the network and bringing confidence that the network is not going anywhere and that transactions will continue and the network to be validated, the network will continue to be strong for the long term. So a lot of good news out there in that regard. And one of the most interesting things that came out today, uh, when you look at um, the news, Wharton, the Wharton Business School is accepting crypto payments for their blockchain program. So you're going to see a lot more um, entities, a lot more institutions, businesses, politicians embracing Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because it is such a large network out there, such a large group of people and it's growing faster and faster that it's one of the best marketing strategies and strategies of support that somebody can engage in from a business standpoint and from a political standpoint. So you're going to see more and more businesses, schools, politicians, industries embracing and accepting cryptocurrency. And on that front, there was an article out today and a lot of Twitter news and a lot of breaking news about Arizona introducing a bill um, for the adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. And this is real. It's legitimate. You can go to the website. Uh, you can go to the state of Arizona's website and um, 
look up under bills, it will show you where the introduced bill is. And this is just a bill that one of the senators, senators introduced to, um, uh, you know, create to authorize Bitcoin as legal tender. And you can read what that's all about here. I'm not going to read this for you. You can go look it up. But this is a legitimate proposed bill. It still has to go to their Senate. It has to be voted on uh, to pass. It'll be interesting to see how this comes out. And uh, what this stirs up, this will be a constitutional issue in terms of legal tender. So it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of a legal battle this, um, <clears throat> this brings up and how this plays out in the long term, and then which states will follow suit. There's a lot of speculation that Texas and Florida will be the next ones in line to try to adopt Bitcoin and or, well, Bitcoin is a legal tender, but uh, potentially other cryptocurrencies, potentially stable coins, things like that. We see uh, what Miami has done um, with their cryptocurrency and Bitcoin program. So it'll be interesting to see how these things play out as we go along here into the near future with Bitcoin adoption, cryptocurrency adoption, and how the states start to rise up as they have through the last couple of years with the pandemic and the vaccines and things like that. You're seeing states really rise up to, um, you know, maintain control at the state level of a lot of their own policies and things like that. And there's been a lot of tension between the federal government and the state government. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and um, which states follow suit and which countries follow suit. Um, in terms of adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. And you can see the treasury uh, is trying to fight back and so is the SEC. And so we'll see, uh, you know, as more of these states jump on board trying to create uh, or authorize Bitcoin, pat, you know, uh, make Bitcoin a legal tender, you'll, you'll definitely see more opposition at the federal level. Uh, and again, it's gonna be a constitutional issue, I think at the end of the day. So really interesting to watch. We'll see how that turns out and which direction that goes, but all of this, is good news for Bitcoin. It's good news for cryptocurrency. And you can see as this news came out, Bitcoin got a little bit of a bounce today. Um, this, this news broke right around uh, a couple of hours ago. It's 426 Eastern Standard Time. So the news probably broke about two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And Bitcoin, you know, has had a little bounce of about 3%, not much. Uh, but, you know, anything at this point is something. And uh, Bitcoin is continuing its journey here trying to decide if it's going to bottom out here like we are tracking and projecting on the death cross theory uh, of that Febu February 14th um, retest of the bottom before we get the retracement. And hopefully altcoins will ensue and begin their altcoin season before we see any kind of a reversal and a longer, uh, more consolidate, consolidatory uh, downtrend in the market, bear market, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to go over that tomorrow. I'm going to make a video on the Pi Cycle top. What's the upside potential for Bitcoin? What's the worst case scenario? What do the bear markets look like for Bitcoin and crypto? What does a crypto winner look like? And is that even possible? So I'm going to do something on that tomorrow, uh, a little bit more in depth there and just kind of, you know, see what the upside potential is, what the best cases are to worst cases. But right now, we are still on track. We still are holding that $35,000, $36,000 bottom range that we hit, we did wick down to 33,000. So as we roll over here, we could, when we when we look for this second bottoming before a retracement, uh, we could wick down into these lower areas and retest that $33,000 level. As long as it doesn't close below 35, 36, we're good. And the theory of the death cross price action pattern repeating itself, um, I think it's just fascinating that it occurred the same amount of days on both of these trends here. And both of these trends look, you know, very similar at this point, this price action. And as you go through, uh, go back through Bitcoin's history, especially this area here, you can see a lot of the similar price actions when you break it down, look at it on the days and the hours and things like that. And you can even see this, this little downtrend, well, not little, but this big downtrend here in terms of the price action as we stepped down, you can see how these patterns kind of repeat themselves. And we're kind of in this little pattern here that could potentially be trying to repeat itself coming off of this right here for another little drop. The question is, if we do, will it bounce at that point and then head back up? So that's what we're looking for. That's what um, the theory that I am following right now. This is a whole lot of buying support uh, for Bitcoin to get through here and to break through. But if it breaks through, then all bets are off till about 20,000. 
but this is a whole lot of support for it to get through. And right now it's holding its own. Uh, this price action is interesting. Uh, it doesn't look like this area over here uh, a whole lot. Uh, it looks more like this area right here that we're in right now that we could be setting up for another little, another little test of that bottom there. But uh, hopefully that will be the final test of this little of this little price action series here. And then we'll be off and running. Um, obviously, today's a Friday. Weekends are always a little tricky. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is to go back and look at uh, what has occurred over the last couple of weekends. And if this is a Friday, this was your last weekend right here. We had a little drop there. Go back before that, we had a little bit of drop. So the weekends have been kind of tricky and a little bit of a slippery slope. Let's take a look at a couple of the altcoins. Let's look at Ethereum. This is the daily chart that I'm looking at here. Um, like I said, I use TradingView. It's a free platform that you can track these things. You can put your cryptocurrencies over here from, from whatever exchange you want to, that you're using, that you want to track. Uh, but all of these altcoins are kind of looking the same. They're all drawing down anywhere from 40, 50 to 70, 80%. They're all at major market structure support levels that if they break, they could, they could bottom out here. Uh, if Bitcoin goes on a run, the altcoins could continue to bleed and drop a little bit. And then once Bitcoin is done, then the capital could flow back into the altcoins. And it's kind of that rotational cycle like we've seen happen where the altcoins will run after Bitcoin makes its run. So that's what we're kind of waiting on. Uh, if you look at Avalanche, same kind of thing. Uh, Solana, same kind of thing. I've been playing with Solana, kind of getting in and out. Uh, the other thing too, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Here's crypto.com, same thing. We had that big blow off top peak and it's just been kind of bouncing around trying to figure it itself out. Um, altcoins, risk reward, a lot of downside in altcoins. You got to be careful. I think Bitcoin is a safer play at the moment uh, than altcoins just because so many of them have set new all-time highs. Uh, they've got big blow off tops and they're at major structural support, just like Bitcoin. And there's, you know, there's a lot of headwinds out there uh, with the liquidity being pulled out of the mar market without the Fed participating. Uh, that's Sushi, Uniswap, there's Filecoin. You can see these charts just do not look good. I mean, there's nothing bullish about these charts. They're all, a lot of them are testing and have retraced completely. I mean, this is Filecoin here, Filecoin's down. 93%. So this, this is potentially what can happen to a lot of these coins here if you're not careful in the altcoin space. Uh, Cardano, as we've seen, has gone through a couple little bumps and jumps. Uh, Matic, uh, Matic's another one that's kind of all over the map, but it's on its way down. Got a little bounce here. Um, and then Link, a lot of people have asked about Link. Link's getting back down to its lower levels before uh, its, its bull run to the all-time highs. And one of the ones that a lot of people have been asking about is Luna. Luna is struggling and, and has a lot of risk to the downside right now. So you need to be very careful on Luna. Again, not a bullish looking chart. Uh, massive head and shoulders going on here, similar to the Bitcoin head and shoulders um, that formed um, last year. Uh, you can see this neckline here. It's already broken. So the downside potential is huge. Uh, I think right now Litecoin, or uh, this is Luna, is down 53%. So we could potentially see this area here returning to these levels in the 24, 25 to 30, that $30 range, uh, which be another 15, 20%, which would put it down. Yeah, you know, if you're looking at 70, 70%, that puts you right in that 75% range. And then if it dropped back to the lows before it made its run, that's 90%. A lot of times these altcoins will draw down 90% where Bitcoin draws down 70, 80%. Uh, so if Bitcoin stops at 50, 60%, these altcoins could probably stop at 70%. So that's your best case scenario for a coin like that. Um, that's, that's a few of the altcoins. I know a lot of people uh, ask about Litecoin. Uh, same thing, Litecoin is just not a very bullish chart on the daily. If you look at these things on the weekly, uh, they, get, they can get even uglier on the weekly. Uh, so you want to look at these higher time frames when you're trying to figure out where these coins can go. And um, the metaverse plays like with Mana, Engine Coin, Chili, Sandbox, these are all rough looking charts right now with a lot more opportunity. I mean, there's no support at all underneath a lot of these metaverse coins because when Facebook came out, the metaverse was a theme, a meme. All of those metaverse uh, coins popped and they've just been straight downhill ever since. So Without the Fed, without all of the liquidity, 
uh, it's going to be very difficult for everything to just all of a sudden reverse course um, with the exception of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is its own thing. It's a different level, different animal. And um, if the theory holds that we're following right now, somewhere between now and February 14th, and we start our, our trek onward and upward, you're going to see altcoins bleed and take a lot more pain from here. And then once Bitcoin rolls over and starts its re starts to come back down, then the altcoins could run. And that would be the time to really enter those altcoins and uh, really make some good gains. So that's what I'm watching in the charts right now. And uh, like I said, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more of a longer term on Bitcoin. What's the what's the high side potential? Can we hit 100,000? Can we hit 500,000? Can we hit a million? And what would it take to get there? And uh, what is the what is the worst case scenario? Let's say everything happens, we get um, you know a conflict, uh, some sort of a global conflict with Russia or whoever, um, and that happens. What? How are the markets going to react to that? What have markets done typically in the past? We'll take a look at that and kind of look at these lower levels of where things could potentially go and kind of have a little bit of uh, some speculating and see what the charts show us, what the price action show us. So until then, uh, it's a Friday evening on the East Coast, Eastern Standard Time. So I wish you a happy, healthy weekend and a good evening, good afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. I'll see you on the next video.